you want to see clearly. So that means you got you to let God separate you from some stuff. You got to take him by his hand. You got to stay with the Lord. You got to let the Lord keep on ministering to you. Amen. Because we still, see, some of us only want to run on one touch, but guess what? We still blurry. We got to be willing to tell the Lord, I don't see it clearly yet. I see something, but it's not clear, and I want clarity. So the Lord is willing to touch us again. Now, why does, now, so why do you need clarity in 2020? The first reason you need clarity in 2020 is because you need to know when to start stuff and when to stop some stuff. In 2020, it's going to be extremely important for you to, to have a sense of timing. And you want to be able to see when and where and when to stop stuff and when to start some stuff. Uh, some of the issues we got in 2019 is because we didn't see when I was supposed to stop and when I was supposed to start. And the Lord put it, because I asked the Lord, what do you want to, and he woke me up and just gave me all these points. That this is it, one, two, three. And that's how the Lord speaks to me, just gives it to me, and I'm just, I just kind of write everything down. He said, tell them that you, say so you want to pray every day, Lord, 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 show me when I'm supposed to start something. And it's particular to your case and when I'm supposed to stop. It's going to be important because what you don't want to do is keep doing something when God says stop doing. And, what you, and, and you don't want to have not done something when God told you a week ago to do it. All right? There's going to be some timing issues, some starting and stopping that you want to have clarity and vision and see clearly what God wants when God wants to do it. Amen? So you need to be able to see that um, because you can't see a stop sign, red light or green light, unless you can see. You can't distinguish it. And so you want to be able to distinguish your beginnings and your endings. There's some, if you keep, God said it's over, it's ended, you keep going with it, you on your own. All right, all right, all right y'all not, I'm kidding. Because you don't want to go into 2020 with blurry vision. I can't wait to get my glasses. Cause I got, I got, I got glue and stuff and smudges all over these things, and I can't halfway see. Hey, Amen. That's why I keep taking them off. Cause look, they helped me at one time, but now they're hindering me. I gotta get some new ones that don't that that aren't damaged. See, some of y'all been working with some damaged glasses. And the issue is, you know, you need some new stuff. Amen. The Lord told me, he said, son, look, you better get this vision together before we go into 2020. Hear me. Now, the last one, this is the last one. Also, which direction to go and which direction to avoid. Because the Lord, he, I, I had to write it down. I told it at 8 o'clock. I had to write it down. I wrote it one way and the God said, that's the wrong way. The Lord said blessings and in my mind, I said curses. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, God, direction towards blessings, and we want to avoid directions that lead to curses. He said, you got the blessing part right, but she was too fast. Put traps. Okay. You need to know, you need to have the vision, the clarity, the spiritual discernment to know which direction is going to lead you towards blessings and which directions are blessings, excuse me, are traps disguised as blessings. See, you want to be able to see what other folk don't see or what other folk aren't telling you. I was looking at an opportunity, and I was excited about the opportunity, and I thought, okay, this is an opportunity for me, and it seemed like I was going to get this opportunity. And then before, in the process, the Lord began to tell me, this ain't for you. This is something you wanted, it ain't for you, ain't for you, ain't for you. And I was like, ah, I know. And then I asked my wife about it, and she said, I don't know about that. Initially, she was made a little bit excited about it, but then she said, I don't think so either. And then by the end of that week, that opportunity kind of passed itself up. And I had to kind of start thinking to myself. I said, Lord, you told me, you told my wife. And I said, what was going on? He said, there's some stuff you don't see. He said, just don't, don't pursue it. Let it go. Amen. It looked like a blessing. But every opportunity is not for you. Y'all miss, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Because some traps look like blessings. Matter of fact, every good trap got some cheese in it. Digging Kevin said a little bit of cheese too. 
okay, I'm trying to help somebody today. Don't you go for it. A little bit of cheese is not worth your, tr your future. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm not sure what your cheese is. All right, then the last one. This is the last one. This, I, I read this text a thousand times. Never saw this till, 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 till today. He says this. Jesus sent him home saying, don't go into the village. <laughs> the Lord told me. There's a difference between home and the village. The Lord was saying, you got to make a difference between who you're supposed to be around and who you're not supposed to be around. Let me help you. He took him out of the village and then told him, don't go back to the village. Go home. There's a difference between home and the village. The village is, is now, there's, there's comfort in the village. There's some, you can lay your head down in the village. You can hang out in the village. But the village will kill you. We don't know what's going on in the village. But Jesus says, don't go home to the village. The problem is, we know that you can, you know, you can chill out in the village a little bit. Now I don't know what your village is. It could be a habit. It could be a situation. It could be some people. It could be some, I don't know what your village is. Jesus said, I took you out. Don't go back. Because when you're in the village, you act like a blind person. What, do you, what does that mean? You act like somebody who doesn't have any understanding of what they're doing and where they're going and how they're going to get there. Because you ever, you ever know, maybe y'all never been in this situation. But, you know, when I was younger and I, I get into a relationship, you know, um, I had a tendency to, to lose uh, perspective. I had a tendency. I don't know why I'm dealing with relationships because I didn't do that to eight. But I would have a tendency to, to I knew better. But I would just be stupid. And then afterwards, I was like, well, why was I? That was dumb. Now I don't, now I don't feel right. And I, oh, oh, this was stupid. Because I, I could see, but I was acting like somebody who couldn't see. 